Aloha, it's Jennifer Victoria Bell, and I wanted to share about the laws of nature and creation. We can still, we can give and call them universal law, uh, but there, there are laws, there, there are universal spiritual laws. They're basically the building blocks, right? These laws are the building blocks of life, of creation. And so when there are a lot of people sharing about, um, we have the law of the land and the law of the sea, like maritime law and the law of the land, you know, these were laws that were created, right? Very a while ago. Hi, Allie. So um, these laws that have we've been living through have not taken into consideration the consciousness of the earth. <laughs> the law and the actual earth energies, which consists of, you know, all nature and it consists of people. So it consists of many different levels of beings. And it's interesting because even in my, in my perception, <laughs> aloha Paul, um, in my perception, in my experience, I haven't even met uh, people who speak for the land that are indigenous, even here or in, throughout the world that have not been impacted by the wound or trauma of that. So in their interpretation of the land energies or the air energies or the elemental energies, their wounds come through. The wounds of their ancestors come through. So I don't, I have never heard an indigenous person, I'm just going to say this, speak what I feel is a level of um, Kind of truth for the land for interpreting for the land and the elements and the even the elementals without their um, collective wound or their um, tribal wound or the wound that we could say the white person inflicted on them when they began this country so again i haven't heard anyone it doesn't mean it doesn't exist and i'm not being you know condescending and you might look at me and say you know you're just a white person what do you know <laughs> But the truth is, I have a connection with the earth, and the way I hear it is might be different than the way you hear it. So how would we go ahead and create a world where we support all beings, all life force energy? How can we create laws that support all life force energy, not just of humans? Because even our laws today don't, don't support the life force energy of humans, if you don't know that. But how can we create laws that support the life force energy of all beings? Because the earth is a resource for us. You know, these clothes come from earth. If I didn't have, if we didn't have that as a resource, we'd still be running around naked, right? Um, we'd have very, very little to cover our bodies with and, and we need to cover our bodies, especially we don't want to be outside when it snows and be naked, or maybe you do, I don't know. So I felt this is an important perspective to share and also to say, like, I have not heard, I have not heard um, people who can, who can speak for the land who are not um, affected by their wound. Honestly, I haven't heard it. Doesn't, like I said, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So then if we were to ever be able to create laws that, that can take into consideration the land, who would be the person to interpret for the land? How would that happen? How would that happen? How would we determine who that person was? Right? And so those are important questions. I'm just posing the questions and I'm saying, I'm saying, and I'm observing even here, what I'm observing is that there are great amounts of people who, um, you know, come from the lineage that, of people who founded this land. And I would say that the first people on this land, and I, I have even questions about this, and this this may, these may be things that I say that are, you know, you may not agree with and that's fine and you may have a reaction to and that's fine, but these are people who came here to this land and this land was something before those people came here, before people set foot on this land, it was something. It had its own consciousness. And then those people who think that they have rights to this land that could speak for this land years ago or interpret for this land are still people who invaded this land. That's Kauai I'm speaking about. 
so how do we, you know, we have to, um, we have to really kind of go back to what was this land before there were people? Did, was there land before there were people? What is the purpose of, la of not just land, I'm talking about the earth itself and everything that it provides. What is the purpose? What is the highest purpose of this energy? And, and, and why, what is the highest purpose in the relationship with humans? How do we become stewards of the earth if we can't, if we can't remove our wounded experience and our relationship with it? I would even say, you know, you might, you know, if you were something, you, know, you might have relationships or wounds within your relationship with this planet itself. You might have that. <laughs> So I'm, I'm asking these questions because I think it's important to start asking them. And the other thing is to ask, you know, if this earth has not agreed to these laws that have been created and, and carried out here, can we start to create something new? Can we create it now, even in the face of the government that exists? And start to empower ourselves in that way and and stop participating in the government the way it's shaped right now. Can we do that? Can we create our own society outside? Um, I'm going to out, you know, outside the laws that have been created that are not supporting by the life force energy. So, yes, all indigenous people live in harmony with their environment. That's supposed to be true. But that's not as true as it used to be. And because there's so much wounding. So let's say this, I'm going to say, because Connie's talking about all. Um, what happens when your culture and your way of living within the environment has been suppressed for so many years? Doesn't have, how does it mature? Did it have an opportunity to progress in the way that it was meant to? So these are all questions I don't have answers for. But what I can tell you, this is just my experience. But I can tell you I've met many indigenous pe people who say they live in harmony with the environment and they're not. And I can, I also have met many indigenous people who speak for the land in a way that um, carries their wounds and the collective wounds of their tribal experience through. And the question is, is that really a way when we carry those wounds into a creation of a new thing, how does that affect the creation of a new way of being? So that's why I'm saying that because we don't want to carry our wounds into a new co-creation. And we want to set some parameters for co-creation and understand and do it through the law respecting these laws of nature. So I don't have answers. Right, I don't have the answer. Um, I have questions, <laughs> and I'm hoping that the answers come in, and I'm hoping that we can um, begin to see how to really uh, co-create our experience on this planet in a different way, in a way that supports um, supports it as a conscious being and all beings that live on it as sentient and conscious beings and all important, right? All equally important. So how do, so how do we do that? <laughs> how, and maybe we need more than one person who can um, speak for the earth. Maybe we need more than one so that uh, maybe that's one of the solutions. I don't know. But I'm I'm sharing that because it, one, it's these are important questions to start to ask, and because I got this very clear, um, you know, they call this the law of the land, but the land energies didn't agree to these laws, and they call it the law of the sea, but the sea energies didn't agree to these laws. These are laws created by humans that have were, didn't take the land into consideration, or the sea, or the air, right, or the or nature at all. We really didn't. So that's those are my those are my questions. 
And uh, like I said, I don't have answers, but we can't live through this trust of even, um, like I said, <laughs> I, I would need to, um, if, if, you, if there are indigenous people who, all kinds of indigenous people, I'm not just referring to one group, who can really speak for nature that aren't bringing in their wounds, I'd love to hear that. I'd love to know those people. I'd love to, you know, and that are solution oriented. Um, and solution oriented, heart centered solutions, right? So not, and again, without carrying these wounds forward so that we, we, we can create something sustainable, something very loving, something very supportive, and something that honors all consciousness, not just on this planet, but beyond. So this is like a big picture question. And it's just an interesting, you know, like I said, this is just my experience, right? This is my experience, meaning you may have heard people who can speak for the land that actually can speak for the land without a wounding coming through. And that would be lovely to, to, to know that. Um, and probably the closest I've heard is Vandana Shiva, truthfully. Um, and she has a solution that's very simple <laughs> to start changing the um, basically health of all beings um, and to live in a way that's more supportive of the earth is to to increase ecological ec organic farming 2% around the globe. 2%, That's it's not 10%, it's not 20%, it's only 2%. So what happens? What does it take? How many people does 2% make, right? Or how much acreage is 2% or whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, whatever the measurements. Um, and I think that's why we, we've been seeing a rise in permaculture and, and um, farming in different ways and looking for ways like not to use pesticides, like chemical pesticides. Um, I think those are important, really important tools to start use, using. And that right now, my contribution is I'm growing a white pineapple. <laughs> I'm growing a white pineapple, I'm growing some aloe, um, I have some basil. So it's the first time I'm really planting um, food uh, in my life. So it's very exciting and I'm excited to see how the white pineapple, it already rooted and I planted it in the dirt yesterday and I'm, I'm speaking to the dirt and I'm speaking to the pineapple and um, seeing what it needs. <laughs> so I can start uh, really honing my and refining my own listening to the earth and the elements and the elemental skills. So I'm doing something in real life, um, something very practical that helps me to do that as myself. So maybe it's, like I said, maybe it's more than one person. Maybe if more of us begin to create this conscious connection with the earth and grow at least one plant and start to tune into that and get into that uh, whatever plant you want to plant, you know, whatever, it could be a flower, it doesn't have to be a food, it could be a vegetable. Maybe if we do more of that, each one of us, the laws that we create will just naturally support all of life force energy. So I hope that's helpful. And if you have any questions or anything you want to share, please um, tag me in the comments below, but lots of love and aloha to you all.